I'm going to talk to you a little bit about ocular ischemic syndrome in neuropthalmology. And it's a syndrome because it's kind of a final common pathway for ischemia involving not just the retina or the optic nerve, but the whole eye. And so that's what we mean by ocular ischemia. And so if you look at the places where the ischemia could manifest, it could affect the front of the eye, the middle of the eye, and the back of the eye. So in the front of the eye, the cornea might get edematous. You might get increased intraocular pressure, that's glaucoma, and usually it's a neovascular glaucoma. But ironically, if the ciliary body is affected and you might get low intraocular pressure from ocular ischemic syndrome because you have ischemia to the production site for the aqueous humor. And so it might be high or low, but usually it's high, neovascular glaucoma. And on the iris, we're gonna see that neovascularization is neovascularization of the iris. And in the back of the eye, we're gonna see the ischemia. And the ischemia can manifest as neovascularization on the disc head or neovascularization in the periphery elsewhere, or it might produce uh, retinopathy. And that retinopathy can be on the venous side or on the arterial side. And the, the venous side is a venous stasis retinopathy, mid peripheral hemorrhages. On the arterial side, it might look like an arterial occlusion, like CRL or BRL, because you have lack of perfusion on the arterial side. And of course, the optic nerve is going to be an ischemic optic neuropathy, and that can be an anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, a swollen disc, or a posterior ischemic optic neuropathy where the disc isn't swollen or it's just pale. And so the ocular ischemic syndrome normally means you have ischemia, and that means the blood supply, and the blood supply to the optic nerve and the retina is going to be derived from the ophthalmic artery. The central retinal artery is going to supply to retina. So when we have ophthalmic artery disease or more proximal disease, that's going to be the internal carotid artery. And so the most common cause of the ocular ischemic syndrome is ischemia from carotid disease, proximal carotid occlusive disease. And so we need to do a carotid imaging, usually carotid Doppler or CT, CTA of the head and neck or MRI, MRA of the carotid. So ocular ischemic syndrome is ischemia to the entire eye, not just the front of the eye, the middle eye, the back of the eye manifests as corneal edema, glaucoma, hypotony, neovascularization in the iris, in the retina, arterial or venous side, ischemic disease, and ischemic optic neuropathy. And usually it's from proximal disease that's carotid, but it can also be ophthalmic. And the usual suspects for the causes, inflammation, vasculitis, like giant cell arteritis in the elderly patients, or Takayasu arteritis in a young patient, or it could be occlusive disease on the inside, a hypercoagulable state, uh, thrombus. However, usually it's a chronic ischemia from occlusive disease and not an embolic phenomenon. And the workup is the same regardless. We're going to do an MRI to look at the brain ischemia. We're going to look at the carotids and then you're going to do the workup, the standard stroke workup, because this is like a chronic stroke of the eye, the ocular ischemic syndrome.